evening, everyone, and welcome to Everything Wrong with Politics, the show that does for comedy what Tony Blair did for house prices in Iraq. <laughs> Tonight, our two teams will become the leaders of political parties before campaigning for votes from our audience in a series of improvisational games. The only snag is they don't know what parties they're representing. That's up to the audience to decide. Now, before we get going, would you please welcome the teams on my left, Party Leader Gareth Johnson, Deputy Leader Joe Pratt, and Treasurer John North. And on my right, Party Leader Brian Murray, Deputy Leader Matthew Doherty, and Treasurer Alistair Sardis. Right, now it's over to the audience. So we need some names for their political parties. Any suggestions for a name for Gareth's party? Backside Creepers. Who what, sorry? <laughs> Backside Creepers. I don't know. Anything else? <laughs> 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 Any others? Thunderbirds all go. Thunderbirds all go. There we go. Copyright issues, but never mind. <laughs> never mind. Right, so Thunderbirds party for Gareth and uh, suggestions for Brian's party. Laborious party. The laborious party. Ooh. 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 Do you need a definition? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I need a lot of help, but I don't need a definition. <laughs> The laborious part is for Brian. Okay, in that case, uh, we're going to play our first game, which is called Party Manifesto, and it's a chance for the party leaders to introduce both their parties and outline their election pledges. So, Gareth, would you please go first? Could you introduce us to the Thunderbirds, our go party? Five, four, three, two, one. Political success is go! <laughs> That's right, we are going to make sure that the other party there doesn't get away scot-free and are going to be maintaining a constant vigil, sorry, constant vigil against bad policies. I've got brains over here and now he has to do the accent and the puppet moves throughout the whole recording. I've got brains over here working on some of our best policies and I've got to say that only the master could have any chance of stopping us and that is none of those three over there. So vote for the Thunderbirds are go party. Thank you very much, Gareth. Uh, right, any, any questions first from the opposition? Oh, that might be a little bit exciting for us. Uh, yeah. When you get, come out of your garage and all the trees fall down, <laughs> is that deliberate? Or is that just Dutch elm disease? <laughs> <laughs> They're not real trees! Oh, all right. <laughs> oh, no wonder it takes them so long to get to emergencies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, right, in that case, uh, Brian, could you now introduce us to the Laborious Party, please? So, uh, we are the Laborious... Hang on. Party. Yeah. <laughs> we think there is too much excitement Ooh, yes. in Far. politics. Far too much. Which is why we back the Conservatives. Oh! I've been to Theresa May's 50th birthday party. Trust me, that was laborious. Some people say. We are very, 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 very boring. Ah. <laughs> but I think a vote for us means that this country will not make any more hasty decisions. <laughs> vote for us. Take your time. Think about it. But vote for us. <laughs> I hope none of you booked a taxi. <laughs> uh, questions from the opposition? Oh, Lord, no. Can we please just move on? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard work, really, wasn't it? All right. All right, then. Uh, let's move on to our second round. It's called They Have My Full Support, and this is a game played by the deputy leaders. Um, they're going to take it in turns to step outside, and the audience are going to suggest a scandal or a faux pas into which they have become embroiled. The deputies will return, the leaders will give a short speech pledging them their full support, and the opposing party will be able to question the deputy. We'll then see if the deputy can guess what it is they've done. So let's begin with Matthew. He's gone. I've only just noticed. <laughs> He's quite small. All right. Uh, right, can we have a suggestion for a faux pas or a scandal that Matthew has become embroiled in? It doesn't have to be related to the laborious yeah, party. Painted the Queen's <laughs> Corgis pink. I think. 
Oh, yeah, we can work with that. Uh, excellent. Uh, someone want to go and, go and fetch Matthew? Oh, hang on. Thank you. Oh. If there's any wobbles involved this time, I'm, I'm going to try. In your own time. All right. Ooh. You'll, you'll well, be pleased to know. We are laborious after all. Yeah. So we have to... Disappointed, but. Yeah. I, I've had a liquorade and I've chewed some of Matt's Nicorette gum, so I'm actually a bit wired. And. Uh... <laughs> You'll be pleased to know I might be taking this a little bit quicker. Um, Antiques Roadshow's on. So, anyway. yes, welcome yeah. back, Matthew. Uh, Brian, I believe you'd like to say a few words right. before the opposition get a chance to. OK, well, we would just uh, like to apologise for any offence that... Uh, you're not meant to see that. Any offence... These are my private notes. The, any offence that may have been caused by Matt's recent actions. Um, it is meant to be the Queen's favourite colour. Oddly enough, it's also Prince Edwards. Um, <laughs> and so he thought it would be a fitting tribute if he were to paint them in that colour. He had no idea they could move so fast. And obviously, in terms of bending over to catch the little buggers, accidents might have happened. <laughs> <laughs> if Matt had not been wearing his lederhosen, we would not be talking about this now. <laughs> so I would just like, on behalf of the laborious party, to apologise very, very, very deeply for the, uh, the uh, Matt's actions. And I beg your pardon, Your Majesty. Thank you very much, Brian. Any questions from the opposition? I just think him over there has to be absolutely barking to pull off something like this. Yay! I get the feeling that all of these gags I get involved in involve small furry animals. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to know is, did you use a brush or did you use a roller? I sprayed them. Oh, you sprayed yeah, them? It's oh, a lot more convenient. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> knowing, knowing how tall Matt is, he's actually able to get underneath them as well. <laughs> Did a really, really proper job. I mean, are you surprised by the amount of reaction there's been to this? Everyone I've told about it has just gone core and G. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so I did such a lovely job of them. You know what I mean? They come out perfect, red all over. Right. <laughs> Underside and I top. I think, uh, Matt, you might have got it. What is it you've um, done? Did I spray paint the uh, Queen's Corgis red? Oh, so close. So close. A shade, a shade of red. After this tragedy, uh, you might be blushing a certain shade of... Lady Penelope. Pink. Yay! Yay! It's not meant to be, it's not meant to be that laborious, Matt. <laughs> well, uh, right, it's now Joe's turn. So, Joe, if you could um, step outside for us. So, uh, we need a scandal or a faux pas that Joe has become embroiled in. She's been using Thunderbird 2 to moonlight as an Uber driver. <laughs> <laughs> Uber driving with Thunderbird 2, yeah. <laughs> That's been a well thought out plan. Emily, if you could do the honours. May, may I say, you're taking this far too seriously. <laughs> uh, welcome back, Joe. Uh, Gareth, as the party, I'm sure you'd like to say a few words on behalf of your deputy. Yes, look, we all need to make a bit of extra money somehow. And yes, there was a fire which we unfortunately couldn't get to um, because of the um, illicit usage. But, you know, she made 50 quid, so <laughs> swings and roundabouts, really, isn't it? I think <laughs> the, the important thing is that she did split the profits with Virgil. So, you know, he's not <laughs> out of pocket through this at all, um, and that's really all I have to say. On Thank you very much, Gareth. Any questions for the opposition? Well, we think it was a fab idea, uh, but can I just ask, did, when you were doing this, did you have any, any undercarriage problems? Uh, no, the, the undercarriage was, uh, it seemed to be fairly intact at the time. And did you mind always be the person who gets to the disaster after the other people? Yes. What he said. <laughs> <laughs> well, putting the round out of its misery, Joe, what have you done? OK, there's, I've got fire, money, some kind of taxi service using a stolen vehicle. Uh, you've been using Thunderbird 2 to um, become an Uber driver. Right. <laughs> yes. I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> uh, I think that round goes to Matthew. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. 
now. Round three is called flagship policy, and this is a chance for the two parties to debate a new initiative. Um, first, we need a new policy. Can I have a suggestion for a random household object? A loo brush. A loo brush, excellent. Uh, Gareth, can you think of a policy relating to a loo brush? I think our policy is that all loo brushes should be disposed of after their first use. Okay, uh, so you're going to be arguing for that, mm. and Brian, you're going to be arguing. Uh, so Gareth, would you perhaps like to explain why you think all loo brushes should be disposed of after their first use? Yes. The humble loo brush, an implement of cleaning. A thing of beauty when it is first fresh out the packet and you look at it there, gleaming in the distance or right up in front of you, in fact, and you think, this is pristine. This is what you need to enter the vile territory of the toilet and remove all which defiles it. But then, once it's been used once, that is, that is soiled. That is no longer fit for purpose. Can't you see everyone join in my movement in saying that movements should be dealt with once and for all and once from one loo brush. That is what I have to say on this matter and surely there's nothing they could say against that. Yeah, we'll, see, we'll see about that. Uh, Brian. Well, uh, we basically uh, are going to uh, take the plunge and defend this one. <laughs> And then we're going to lift the topic up and plunge it again. <laughs> and keep going until eventually we have cleared the blockage, which is Gareth's thinking. We are flushed with success in the, when we think about our policies on this one. We've been bristling at Gareth's suggestions. This is a ridiculous idea. It is said that every five minutes, a whale swallows a loo brush. <laughs> I can just say on behalf of that whale, it's getting really cheesed off right now. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. In, I'll tell you, in the finest of political traditions, let's score this round based on bribery. Um, so oh, I'm going to oh, give oh. both teams a chance to bribe me, and the best bribe wins. I am writing as quickly <laughs> as I can. Under the ethos of our party, of course. Yes, yes. yes. There we go. Obviously, I've written three words and I've got RSI already. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Right. So, uh, Gareth's bribe is a lifetime supply of loo brushes. Very, very on topic. Uh, and Brian's bribe is ten thousand piece jigsaw designed by penguins. Um, <laughs> oh, I want that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that that team you want? Yeah, 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 we, we can have that. We can Rough have that. Out. I think we can have that one. <laughs> Whack the net. Well, well done, Gareth's team. Well done. <laughs> Uh, it's time for a quick fire round now, which we're calling Spin Doctors. Our audience have supplied us with some ideas of potentially difficult situations our parties might confront, and it's up to the teams to spin their way out of it. So it's a quick fire round. So fingers on buzzers. Let's just check um, Gareth's buzzer. And Brian's buzzer. Mr. Phil. Nicely different, well done. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> budget cuts, Real budget cuts. Yeah. Uh, a right. Bright, a bright future in politics awaits. Yeah. Are we ready? <laughs> Right, number one, you were caught forcing co cats and dogs to copulate. <laughs> Gareth. It's part of our crossbreeding programme to create the perfect mutant hybrid. <laughs> <laughs> it was raining. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you that one, Matt. Right, uh, you've been barbecuing hamsters. <laughs> Yeah, finger looking good. <laughs> You've gate crashed the royal wedding, got drunk, and made Prince Philip do the conga. Right. Well, that's just an ordinary day in the life of Camilla Parker Bowles. <laughs> <laughs> made him do the conga, indeed. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm going to give that one to Brian. Uh, right, health minister has been using his influence to be allowed to perform as Elvis at the Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> well. At least we didn't get null points that time. <laughs> <laughs> right, you've stolen all of the ice cream for the ice cream trucks. Aww. The kids had it coming. <laughs> I only stole it so I could give it out for free! Oh, oh come on! <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, no, we can't top that. <laughs> <laughs> you fudged that a bit, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's not crushed nuts, I've just got laryngitis. <laughs> right, you've, uh, you've spent all of your petty cash money on cannabis. Mm. I don't remember doing that, man. 
<laughs> we, we approve of the use of cannabis for medical reasons. Did you know there's 100,000 people with multiple sclerosis in this country? Cannabis just helps me not mind. <laughs> uh, right, and finally, uh, you strap stolen sea turtles to your feet and then jet ski down the Thames. <laughs> Have you seen the price of those water taxis? <laughs> <laughs> the new James Bond film. <laughs> oh. New Olympic event. Oh. Fair play. I'm going to give that to you. Oh, that's a, that means that's a tie. Ooh. 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 It's an event of a tie. I have pre-prepared Ooh. one for you. Uh, right, so here is your tiebreaker. So, someone hacked your iCloud account and published pictures of you in a compromising position with a clown. Yes, they absolutely did hack my account. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Brian's team win that round. <laughs> right, now our next round is entitled Fake News and we thought we would dedicate it um, to the soon-to-be former editor of the Daily Mail, Paul Dacre. Um, <laughs> each of the party leaders is going to read out a short speech and it contains four statements but not all of them are true. It's up to the opposing team to guess which are the facts and which are the fiction. So, uh, right then Gareth, if you'd like to give us your speech. Mm, right, so my speech is on the subject of health which is a very important topic. It's so important, in fact. Health is so important to some people that when a local boot store opened slightly later than usual, this was deemed newsworthy by the Mid-Sussex Times, who went with the shocking headline, Early Customers Find Boots Closed, which was a genuine headline in the, the Mid-Sussex Times. And not only is it important, but the NHS is in a state, a real state. So much of a state that I ran some numbers to show truly how bad it is. And this is absolutely true, assuming I've got the maths right. If you add together a rough estimate of all the money paid per year in the UK by tooth fairies, or by parents to their children after they lose a tooth, if you're more cynical, but, but obviously paid by, by genuine real tooth fairies. If you add all that money together in a year, it is higher than the NHS budget for dentistry. <laughs> <laughs> and because of these horrific problems with the NHS, this is the kind of thing we get. Firstly, we get an instance that recently happened where a man had to go into hospital to have a leech removed from his nose, which had been in there for two full weeks before he actually managed to notice. And secondly, you get horrific situations such as this one, where an anaesthetist, an anaesthetist, an go on, go on. I, 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 I made this myself, nose. I didn't have to use this word. A knockout doctor. A knockout doctor, oh no, <laughs> oh no, a no. doctor, no. no. an anaesthetist, I can edit it, it'll be fine, in St Mark's Hospital in Harrow has recently been suspended for taking selfies with unconscious patients doing silly poses. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you very much, Gareth. So, Brian's team, which ones are facts and which ones are fiction? I reckon that's, these, these ones are true. Oh, and no, two. The two, no, no, I, yeah, it's, I can't help but think number two's with this bunch of half which we've got in charge at the moment. I can believe number two being true. So, you well. think number two not, about the dental budget is the yes, truth? Yes, it's, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's not enough of money, though. <laughs> Look, I think it sounds. It I think sounds that, right, It sounds true, which means it's exactly how his devious mind would work. And it's a no. Yeah, yeah. I, okay. I, I think, okay. I think it's false because that, it sounds true. If that one comes to bite you on the arse, don't come around. <laughs> as long as it's not you biting me on the arse, I don't <laughs> mind. Okay, so go for it. <laughs> I I one, because <laughs> that could be either one. Is it two and two. Uh, well, it doesn't have to be. Okay, okay we're going to say all right. Only because. <clears throat> the first two sound so true that uh, we think they're traps. Yeah. So we think the thing about the early customers finding boots closed, yep. obviously it could have been reported, but we don't think it was. Yep. We think the tooth fairies one is false. I'm pretty sure the one about the leech being removed from the nose is true. And I'm afraid the anaesthetist posing, doing selfies with unconscious patients, I regret to inform you, um, yes, we, we can believe that one, unfortunately. It's very boring being an anaesthetist and there's only so many crosswords. Yes. <laughs> Surprising that more of them don't do it, really. Yes, well, you don't know that, do well, you? Well, that's true, we don't. Uh, two out of four. Ah. Two. 
The tooth very well was right, wasn't it? No, that was no. false. Yeah. <laughs> I genuinely ran the numbers just in case it was true, and it is close if you do a certain way of estimating it, but it's definitely Damn. not true. Oh. Uh, the anaesthetist, that's false. Oh, uh, right. That is false. Oh. Um, and it's also true about the headline in the Mid Sussex Times. Ah, that was believable. Uh, the Mid Sussex. Well, um, no, what happens in Mid Sussex? In which case, case Gareth's team win that one, Sussex. or don't yeah. 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 Uh, right, well, we're very nearly at the end of the evening. So I'm going to give each of the party leaders a chance to sum up uh, their election campaigns before we go to the polls. So, Gareth, would you like to uh, explain why everyone should be voting for the Thunderbirds Are Go party? Everyone should be voting for the Thunderbirds Are Go party for one very simple reason. If you don't vote for the Thunderbirds Are Go party, I will be using Thunderbird 5 to hack into all of the world's media and I will be retrofitting my vast array of high trek craft with battle weapons so that I can storm the country and take over anyway. So you might as well save a bit of effort and vote for us. <laughs> it, it's a bold move. It's a bold yeah, move. Yeah, bold move. Yeah. Um, Delicately. Brian, <laughs> threats of violence to the audience. Well, it's the sort of conviction politics we like. Um, <laughs> but yes, no, here in the laborious party, we believe in doing things properly. We have a manifesto that is in alphabetical order until we discover that all the chapters begin with the same letter. C. <laughs> we, we, thank you. <laughs> one, person at the, one person at the back gets it. That's, that'll do for me. <laughs> we, you, we've heard about the number of laborious tasks that we, in, in the, uh, the quiz tonight. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, using the plunger is a laborious task. And if a job like that is worth doing well, it's worth doing well. So every time I have to use the plunger, I tog up, put a Mac on, put a mask on, put something over my face, get breathing apparatus, put a little plastic bag over my head, and I get my wife to do it. <laughs> <laughs> we believe in the laborious party. I haven't finished yet. Sorry. <laughs> we believe in the laborious party that if a job is worth doing, it's worth doing slowly. No train journey worth its salt should be less than three and a half hours long. And judging by the recent news, there's a lot of train operators who agree with me. So, thank you and very much. Also, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't finished yet. <laughs> it's, it's in the name, Mr. Speedy Gonzalez. What could be more exciting than being on the phone to your bank for an hour and a half, listening to music, only to discover when they finally pick up the phone, your account's been hacked by Colombian gangsters. Or but, thumb, number Thunderbird 5. Oh, oh no, Thunderbird yeah. 5, yes, that's true. So we say, vote for the laborious party for a job that's worth doing slowly. We're finished now. Finished, thank you very much. <laughs> Marvellous, I was worrying because it's nearly Monday. So, um, <laughs> right, then it's time for the election. So, I'm going to ask you to cheer for the party you want to vote for. So, any votes for the Thunderbirds Go party? <laughs> Ooh. Votes for the Laborious party? Ooh, that's quite a close run thing, but I think Thunderbirds edged it on that one. So, well done. Look at the uh, so with that, we've come to the end of the program, and like Jeremy Corbyn at a bar mitzvah, it's time to make a swift exit. <laughs> oh, would you please uh, join me in thanking the teams, Gareth Johnson, Joe Pratt and John North. <laughs> and Brian Murray, Matthew Doherty and Alistair Sanderson. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. Until the next time, good night. Yeah.